Hey, I'm Nick, and in this video, you'll hear from my friend Andre Jones, Next Gen Pastor at One Community Church in Plano, Texas. And Andre and I talk all about a digital strategy for kids ministry, for student ministry, and for Next Gen ministry. And you'll hear Andre talk about the five volunteer teams that they created to do ministry online. And what I love is that four of the five teams involve connection and relationships. It's not just this one-way thing about you know creating content and pushing it out online. No, it's a two-way conversation and four of the five teams are all about that. You also hear him talk about the three categories that they put families in as they follow up with them to help make sure they're engaged. So you're gonna love this conversation and this is one of many interviews that are kind of bonus content as part of the new digital church course. That course is all about helping churches reach and connect people online. So if you're interested in that, check out newdigitalchurch.com. Go ahead and subscribe if you wanna see the other videos in this series. And if this is helpful to you, give this video a like. Hey, Nick Blevins here and I'm here with my friend Andre Jones. Welcome, Andre. Hey, Nick, what's going on, sir? So tell us about yourself and your family and your church as we get started. Cool, man. Uh, once I'm Andre Jones. I'm out in Plano, Texas, which is like north of Dallas because everybody comes to Dallas and they just assume like everything is right around the corner. It's not. And so I'm north of it. Um, married 11 years, two kids. Like all of my kids are out of kids ministry now. And so I have a 14-year-old mm. and now a 12-year-old. And so, um, man, I've been at one community church. We're like five campuses now because everybody has an e-campus. And so four physical, one e-campus and just been loving it, making it happen. And so um, that's me in a nutshell, kids, wife, ministry, making it happen. Awesome. We're going to talk about digital ministry specifically in next gen and kids and students and like, what does that look like? Mm -hmm. And so I'm just curious to hear more about all the things that your church has been doing in the digital world, COVID-19 obviously started that for you, but those are things you want to keep in place. So let's just start with your children's ministry mm -hmm. and what that looked like in terms of instead of like the weekend option, or if you didn't come that weekend, what does it look like online? What are you offering there? Yeah, so um, if you're in person, you're definitely getting that experience, but online we offer an experience for our preschoolers and also our elementary age kids. And that has full announcements, welcoming, uh, a worship piece, uh, a game time piece, and then also a, a message that ties into what we're teaching on the weekend in person, but it's just specified for uh, that online experience. And then one of the unique things that kind of COVID caused us to do is to launch virtual groups. And so now we have um, probably about 30 or 40 groups that are meeting every week on Sunday with a group of kids from kinder all the way to fifth grade. And dude, it's been amazing there. So tell me about those groups. Like, how does that work in terms of, do they watch the online content before? Do they watch it during the group? Mm -hmm. uh, how many are in a group or using Zoom? Give us, give us a look yeah. into you know, what that looks like. So um, the goal is for them to watch it prior to it. And so we, we send it all out. Hey guys, you can watch it online. Uh, our content releases every Saturday at about four o'clock. And so that gives them all a Saturday evening and all the morning to watch it. And then those small group leaders, you know, we give them the curriculum, but really what we've seen is that they've just built relationships. Um, and so now, like, they literally, I was talking to a lady last week, and she's literally like, hey, like, I, I try to tell my kids that we have to get off, but they just want to keep on going. And so that has been the biggest win there. It's all done uh, via Zoom. And so when we tried to launch it, we said, okay, do we just bring them all into one large group? Do we break them out into to breakout groups? And so what we've allowed our leaders to do is to set up their own Zoom. Um, it's password protected. You know, the kids can't come in there and adjust the screen. We get all of that and we have a roster and then we have moderators who go through because they're all at the same time. So those moderators are just going through regularly just to pop in, make sure everything's good. There's no creepers on there that the, the attendance is well. And so um, that happens every week. Moderators checking in in addition to just watching the message every weekend. Now, tell me about student ministry and what that looked mm -hmm. like online. And I, I know there's been some changes there, but tell us about that. Yeah, so our student team, uh, one, like, I kid you not, like, once we started all this, it was just crazy. And so everybody just, you know, now all of a sudden, everybody's like a videographer, and now we have all the audio, but they're doing a similar deal. Uh, we started with just one student message. And so it was similar concept, announcements, um, worship, a uh, little fun activity, and then uh, they do the message. 
And what we found out is that our middle schoolers needed something a little more specified to them. And so we recently launched a, like a middle school um, session and then have a separate high school session. Some of the content is the same in regards to like there's still announcements, but the message is geared more towards middle schoolers opposed to high schoolers. And the response to that has been amazing. Like our team probably pulled a little bit of their hair out just trying to like make that change so quick, but it's been great um, and just seeing that. And that's weekends, but then on, a, on like Wednesday now for our kids, we do what we call our midweek message. And that was kind of birthed out of needing something that was kind of fun, but also like drove a little bit deeper than just the weekend experience. And so uh, myself and Mr. Cameron, like we do it every week. And then our students are starting a live experience. And so they've been testing all that out because we, they did Instagram live for a little bit, got, got a little feedback there. And so now we're going to launch this um, live experience. And the thought is that if it goes well, you can do a hybrid model to where, let's say, we start letting more people in. You can still stream it, but then have people in person and then not disrupt the experience. And so we're trying to pull that off. That sounds like a good idea. Now tell me about Kids Ministry met, those groups met on Sunday morning, same mm -hmm. time, so very similar if they came in person. Was student ministry the same way where your groups met the same time they used to meet just online or were they different mm -hmm. times and nights? What did that look like? So for students, they have a little more flexibility based on their leader. And so some of them are Sundays at three, some of them are Sundays in the evening, some of them are middle of the week. And we wanted to offer those leaders just the flexibility to lead and uh, to grow their groups. Some of them will watch the entire message and then have the conversation. Some of them just jump in and use connection time. And we've even seen some of them try to do like a little hybrid model where they've either come to the church, um, circled up social distancing all that fun stuff just so they can get some of the students outside of the house and so um it's been a big win for them i've heard like just great remarks from families just saying they appreciate it during this time the kids are still connected even though like our campus hasn't been open yet yeah sure now i'm, I'm interested in hearing about the volunteers you know so mm -hmm. i mentioned there's some volunteers who served in person and then they yep. kind of switched to some kind of online role as a small group leader or something like that uh, I imagine some didn't make the switch. I bet you've had to recruit <laughs> some new ones. So tell me all about how you've made this work so far with volunteers. And then we'll get to like how you make that and in-person work. But right now, just tell me about right. digital. Yeah, man, dude, when I tell you, like there is no book that prepared anybody for like, hey, here's how you launch a kids or student campus in like four days. And so literally uh, once it launched, um, we, we polled all our team and we just said, hey, here's some opportunities. So we broke it up into tutoring because we want to be able to provide online tutoring because we saw that kids were struggling um, just with doing everything at home. So we said, if you want to tutor for about an hour a week, come be a part of that. Um, care calls was another area. And we said, hey, if you just have the gift of gab and you just want to love on some people and shepherd them, we'll be a part of our care call team. Then just um, some people to actually be a part of our digital experience team. So if you want to host, if you want to be a part of games, if you want to help us create content, like we want you to be there. And then the biggest one that we saw the response was to is the virtual small group leaders. And we just said, hey, uh, we're going to pair you up. So if you're not like the strongest or if you're a little nervous, we'll pair you up with another leader so that you can lead a group of small groups or small group kids. And then the fifth one I thought about is um, we did engagement. So every week our main church posts um, YouTube and Facebook. And so we have a team that is actively engaging, commenting, reaching out. Um, tell me your first time guests. How can we get you connected? So we invited them to serve still within our kids and student group, but be on those platforms so we can keep them connected. Now, you, I think you said the virtual small groups mm -hmm. leaders, that was like the biggest response. Yep. How else did it shake down? I mean, did you get it basically what you needed in these other areas? Tutoring, for instance, comes to mind. Like, how did it mm -hmm. shake out in terms of who went where and did you have enough for all those different areas yeah um i don't know if you ever have enough i think for tutoring it just kind of said here's what we can offer and so based off of our our availability we said hey here's what we can offer these x amount of slots uh, we got about 30 tutors right now who are online um for care calls there's probably about 10 that came there for small groups i think about it's probably about 65 small group leaders who are engaged there and that engagement team has about 20 who just jump on there, which then you're wondering, where's the rest? The rest were saying, hey, 
I don't really want to do digital because I'm zoomed out and I'm tired of being on everything. So when you reopen, you let me know. And so we just kind of kept them in a rhythm, loving on them, caring on them. And then when we reopened, I was really surprised that we sent out another survey and people were just like, I am ready. Cause I'd seen churches, I'd seen the groups, I had heard responses. And so like that kind of blessed my heart, but we still got a lot of work to do to make that happen. But them serving digitally has been amazing. Um, the group that's been doing our recording and then coming out, like they're literally family. And so um, we, we hang out whenever we're there, we laugh. I, our producer gets a little mad because she's like, hey, we got to keep going. We're like, yo, when's the, last, when's the last time we actually hung out with people? So it's been good digitally making that happen. Did you find some people, because I feel like we got a little bit of this when we made some of the same kinds of shifts and we recruited people to, like you called it, your digital experience team. Mm-hmm. Did you get new people that you never knew would be in that kind of role or had that kind of skill or ability? Was it a lot of the same people that did large group in person and they just yeah. made the shift? Like who made that group up? Um, combination. It was probably, if I had to split it, it's probably 80 that already were serving and about 20 new. And some of the people that are now doing our digital, so there's, there's one story that comes to mind, a lady by the name of Esther. So we were literally just doing care calls. Hey, what's going on? How are you? And we talked to her. And she said, I want to get connected. And so, we're like, okay, cool. Come on out. And her energy was just amazing. Anytime she gets on a call, anything, you're just like, who is she? So we invited her out. She watched for probably a month. And then you know, she jumped in one of our games. And she has been one of our best host game time people ever. Same thing we got a lady named Caitlin. So like some of them just, maybe they were um, starting to serve right around when everything started to shut down. And so we just kind of tapped them on the shoulder and said, hey, would you be interested in being a part of this? Um, And so some of them jumped in there. But one of the ways that we use to reach new people is anytime we have an online experience and we say, hey, this is an event. We did these party in places. We do um, on the weekend, we do our messages. We put little next steps comments in there. So anytime we do that, there's always a call that says, do you want to take your next step? And we've gotten parents who said, okay, now I want to be a small group leader. We got in parents who want to be on our parent council. And so those families are just looking at our weekend experience and they're finding the pain points and they're helping us to resolve those. And so whether you sign up to be in a small group, whether you sign up to be baptized, whether you sign up for one of our events, there's always something that says, um, can we help you take your next step? And that's how we've gained new volunteers over this time. That's great. And like you said, you can never have enough volunteers. Right. Now, when I, when I look at your list of five things, uh, what I think is fascinating is four of them are involved connection. Mm-hmm. So a lot of times we think digital ministry, online ministry, we think like this one way push. I mean, we don't think of it as one way, but all it is is a one way send of information or content. Right. right. It's not like a two way conversation, but four of your five are, which I think is great. And I'm, I'm curious about the care calls mm-hmm. because I think, a good digital strategy has to have connection and relationships. And so how do you do that? And you did that with phone calls. What did you do with those people that said, yeah, I'll I'll make care calls. Mm -hmm. So we'll meet with them biweekly and it's just a connection time. It just says, Hey, how are you doing? What's going on? And then there were different rosters that would come in. So once we, we kind of put in like three boats, we knew the people who were active online that we saw that they were connected. We saw the people that registered for something, but maybe weren't, actively in a small group and then we just had a a roster of people that we wanted to go after like hey either we haven't seen you or we haven't seen you online or anything based off of the signups and we ultimately said hey here's a google sheet we gave them all the scripts and then they would just put their notes in there so that we can see and we did a little ranking system so a means like oh my gosh i love everything's great b is kind of like you know you talk to somebody and like hey uh i thought we watched it it was all right and it's not that it was bad it just they're doing life And then C was kind of like, uh, I haven't seen it. Like some of our families didn't even know that we had digital. And then like the red flag ones were like, hey, I'm pastor. And we would instantly just follow up there. But that team just calls through, gives us that feedback so we can keep people connected. Now, how about volunteers for both digital and in person? Like you said, there's people that say, hey, uh, you know, I'm not in for any of these yep. digital options, but when you're gathering it again, what were some of the tensions you felt? And I know that that's still an ongoing thing, you know, mm-hmm. to run the digital thing. A lot of it that was new. 
and now the in-person thing that's different, you know, and how are you solving that? I guess recruiting more people different ways, like how's that working or maybe not working? Oh <laughs> uh, no, I need, I need, I need the answer to that one. Like we need to get somebody on here who can answer it. Um, it's going. So what we found is there are some people who are all uh, digital. They're like, that's where I want to live. I'm not ready to come back. I love my small group. I love my character. That's where I want to be. You got some people who are like, oh my gosh, physical is great. Like I need to see kids. Literally a lady was like, I don't want to do none of your digital stuff. I need to be around kids. She was like, I zoom all day. So great. And then you've got a small group that we call them digital because they're still doing their digital things, but then they're also coming in person. And so right now I'd say digital is, is pretty good. I think there's always room for growth. Um, but based off of who wanted to be in groups and who's in groups, we're able to accommodate that. Uh, on the physical side is where we have a whole lot of work to do just because we're like, our people are excited about coming back to church, but then there's still a mix of, all right, uh, what are y'all doing? What's the safety procedures? How many kids are going to be in the class? And so you're trying to ease that, um, but also encourage them, hey, uh, let's do this. And I think I was talking to, I was actually talking to one of the groups that you let me lead, the uh, number nine. And one of the ladies on there just said, hey man, um, what we needed is somebody who was a champion of fun. And so now that they're actually coming back in person, uh, we're trying to remove all the fear and all the mask and all that, and just remind them of the why. Like we get a chance to connect with kids. We get a chance to encourage them. Families have been waiting and we get to do this together. And that rallying, has helped keep the team as well as I think bring new people. And then also just using social media, expose what's happening. So, Hey guys, here's a service. Here's our volunteers smile, post that because I think people want to see that it's going well. And so, but we got a whole yeah. lot of work to do. Like I got to call, sure. connect everything, hustle, whatever I got to do. Yeah. It's like rebuilding it in some ways, especially to do both. Well, now you mentioned there's something like six digital experiences a week, you know, between mm -hmm. all these things for kids and students, but one of them we haven't talked about yet are parties in places. So tell us Woo about that. So party in place all started because our lead pastor, uh, he invited me to meet with uh, some school leaders. So he meets with them regularly about once a month. And so on this call, they're sharing, and this is right when uh, everything shut down. And so, School, they're trying to figure it out. Kids aren't going to school. And so we just said, hey, how can we serve you? And she just said, um, the seniors that are getting ready to graduate, they have no prom, they have no graduation, and they're just like struggling. And so we heard that. And so we said, what can we do? Um, so we connect with some of the local, we connect with the local radio station, connect with like all of our campuses, and we pulled off what we call party in place. And so literally it was a Friday night experience. It's all online. They can tune in for whatever they were. Like, it don't matter where you're at, on your tablet, on your phone, cast it. And it was probably one of the biggest turnouts we ever had. Um, we gave away an entire car, like craziness. We gave away an nice. entire car. We had like the Zoom thing or the, the FaceTime, we drove to the yeah. girl's house, knocked on the door and we're like, hey, here's your brand new car. And it was like mind blowing just to see the response from it that they were just like, Thank you for doing something for us. We needed this. We needed to take our mind off of everything that was happening. So it was a beautiful thing to see. And you've done them, you know, like you were saying, different ones each week, like kids, mm -hmm. students, seniors, some things like that. What are some of the other components that were part of these party in place? Yeah. So uh, depending on what it was, there was either a, there was a worship uh, part of it for like more so for our kids side, there's a little bit of worship. There were giveaways because everybody loves giveaways. And so I think for our teachers, every minute, so we did our event, every minute we gave away an iPad. Like literally the little scroll is going around, like boom, you get an iPad, you get an iPad. iPad. Um, there were um, just connection points. So there's always some type of engagement, like, hey, what are the questions? Um, depending on the age group, there was an opportunity for them to see themselves. So we didn't want them just to see all the old people. We wanted them to see some of their peers. Um, there were talking points maybe some encouragement and so if we got like we got some videos from some people that we knew that was encouraging and then we did a little thing for our kids called kid talk and that's literally where we had like four or five kids and they just talked about either it be fear or fun faith and so it was just cool for kids to see their peers talking worship story depending on what it was and so those come with a couple of the elements there 
That's great. I love what you're doing digitally with kids ministry and student ministry. And that mm -hmm. really can't go away. That this needs to be something we're all thinking about all the time. So thanks for taking the time to share with us. How can people connect with you and with one community church? Yeah, man. So uh, I probably live on Instagram. That's probably the easiest. My email will be in there. If you look on, I got a little dog and you'll see me post called life with lyric. That's all right. That's my, my little doggy there. Um, but then family, all the good stuff. Instagram is probably the easiest way, but then also email. Um, yeah, that's probably the easiest thing. And cool. then I'll give Thanks. you um, two little things we made just on for a uh, digital experience if you want those. And yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, we can link that up in the description. Well, Andre, yeah. thanks for taking time to share with us. I appreciate you, Nick.